Da -da 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 -da! Hello, everybody. Welcome to a special season one, episode 58 recovery episode of Do 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 The Hate Napkin. And I am Anonymous, joined <laughs> coming to you live from Columbia, South Carolina. Now, I'm Eric Bjorn, your co host. Our uh, other co host, uh, Garrett, is locked in my GIMP uh, trunk just on the other side of the room. People might be wondering why we haven't seen him for the last, oh, I don't know, 56 episodes or so. He hates That's us. <laughs> Every once in a while, I take the rubber ball out of his mouth and let him have some food. All right. So we're also joined. Oh, by the way, if you've got something you hate, and all of the things that I hate this week are from uh, our special listeners out there in uh, the ether, uh, send it to info at the hate napkin.com. That's info at the hate napkin. We're also joined by. Our special guest, Paul Lind of the Center Square. Not a man, baby, from Burnt Corn, Alabama. <laughs> you know, I take offense at that. That implies. <laughs> you resemble that remark. <laughs> yes, I am a man, baby. Bob, Carla, I was thinking of doing the show as a naked um, interpretive dance. Um, I objected. Yes, yes. We had a staff meeting and Carla Carla objected. She said it wasn't so much the above the waist part that she was worried about. It was the below well, the waist. I don't think you actually know what the staff meeting means. I don't <laughs> think it and I we didn't really appreciate what that meeting was about. <laughs> Until we went through Carla's desk drawer. <laughs> you would have appreciated it less if you had known where it took place. But it was anonymous. In the anonymous bathroom. You know what I hate? People who call you when they're taking a dump. <laughs> okay. Well, that leads off the show today. There might be hate email. We'll get to it at the end tonight. Yes, people, people listen. Um, not that I know about this. I've seen it on YouTube. Um, <laughs> there is an art to the uh, telephonic shit. Um, and, and this is this is what what you gotta do is you've got to you got to let the person, you know, most people like to gab for a little bit, right before you let the pin, right before you pinch it off and let it go. You bring up a subject that you know the other person's going to just gab on for a minute. That's when you hit mute quick. And then you pinch it off and you get the big kerplunk. What's kind of embarrassing, though, is when you're kind of like midway through conversation and an unexpected like fart comes through. But it's not like any normal fart. It's clearly a on the toilet fart because of the cacophonous echo. The echo. <laughs> you get the echo effect of the fart. And all of a sudden you're like, you quick, you reach for things like the sink or like other thing, you know, metal objects in the shower so you can clang them. You seem to know a lot about this subject. No, no, I, it was a, it was a, it was a <laughs> webinar. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> You know, usually I hate webinars, but I found this one to be sort of fantastic. Mm -hmm. that, so how do you know when someone's calling you like that? I don't know. Women's intuition. Well, there's that you know, little bit of strain in the voice, maybe. And, you know, if you're in a bathroom, you're going to get the echo effect generally, you know. So I, I you know, not again. That's what in the webinar they taught us ways, <laughs> bullet points on how to how to find out. Well, I think there the is, better question. There's pooping etiquette. I mean, the when you're on the pooper, it's okay to send text. Ma that's when you send your messenger messages, your signal messages. You're, you should be catching up on texting. Uh, you right. should not be making voice calls. <laughs> Uh, let alone, how about the ex ever the ever so accidental for, uh, FaceTime? <laughs> and you maybe don't realize it because you've maybe thrown back a few. <laughs> I'm not that that's ever happened. That was one of the last slides in the webinar. It's not something that's never happened. I think, I think, what, what's his name? What, is it Jeffrey Tubin? Well, I, that's was afraid, story. I was afraid you guys had something to tell me, and uh, I'm glad that you said Jeffrey Tubin. 
I think I, I think the more compelling question is what do you do when you find out somebody's taking a shit on the call? Call them on it. Yeah. The yeah, call usually ends blissfully. It's I have mom. a friend. I have a friend who's a district court judge who did a lot of uh, Zoom court. Um, she said she saw people getting out of the shower, laying in bed, sitting on the toilet, came to Zoom court with no shirt on. Um, yeah, she saw a lot. She saw a lot. People don't realize that when you're in Zoom court, it's just like being in the courtroom. Yeah, but here's the thing. Most of those people probably would have done those things in the actual courtroom. <laughs> in burnt corn, yeah. If there was only a crapper in the court. I'm sorry. If I could show up to traffic court on a toilet well, and take a dump, I would. But you can't do that in a regular courtroom. You would get hit with some kind of um, contempt of court for taking a shit in the courtroom. She said she actually did nail a guy for contempt because he did it once and then um, she told him to come back at a more appropriate time and he came back on the same crapper and she found him in contempt of court. This, this presents a sort of a rideshare opportunity for maybe Uber bailiff. <laughs> maybe maybe you could get deputized in some manner and then sent over to you know the address to to bring him in <laughs> well they might, i i i almost guarantee you they wouldn't give you a tip <laughs> which is no different than any other rideshare experience in south carolina i got to tell you oh by the way we do have a sponsor even though this episode will come up for like three months uh, we are sponsored by, in addition to Anchor FM, where if you want to make a ridiculous podcast like ours, Anchor FM is there to help you. Uh, we are sponsored by my new book, Uber Nights. Uber Nights, which you can buy over on uh, the Jeff Bezos porn site, Amazon. Uber Nights. Many, like 40 fun little vignettes about the craziness of late night rideshare in Columbia, South Carolina. All right. So I've got a couple of ones from, uh, as I do drive Uber at night, I've started to do little mini episodes of the hate napkin with my passengers. And I've got a couple of good ones. Oh, look at this. Carol's got her copy of Uber Nights. Go on over to YouTube. I have my copy of Uber Nights. For Polly, who lives, do you have the Vietnamese version yet? The translation took a couple of weeks to get done, but. It's called Walk Your Ride Chair. <laughs> uh, Oh, Peace. it's a trifecta, folks. Head it on does. Over to, head on over to Amazon and get your copy of Uber Nights now. So, I had one person this week with. I don't know if they hated this. Yeah, they. It's not that they hated the fact that the ice, because that's an old bit. You, know, you go to McDonald's and the ice cream is out, or the shake machine isn't working. Right? We all have experienced that, and we all hate that. That's not the thing he hates. So he hated the fact that 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 fast food places don't bother to give you some sort of a notice, so that you sit in line for thirty minutes for your one dollar and fifty cent ice cream cone, only to find out that now I don't know why anybody would know that because you ought to know in advance that the ice cream machine is always broken. But there's no notification generally of things we're out of. In late night fast food. They run out of fucking burgers, let alone, you know, shakes. And you got a long line. You get to the, oh, sorry, sir. We don't have any buns, uh, beef. Uh, all we have left is mayonnaise and pickles. I mean, there's got to be a way to notify people in advance. So uh, he came up with a great idea to counter his hate, which is some sort of a flag. Like in general, like, you know, a McDonald's flag. And if it's at half mast or half staff, that means the shake machine and the ice cream is out. <laughs> so like from a mile away, you can just you turn your car around, go home, go do something else. You'll know several minutes in advance, the shake machine is down. 
but then they could add little things to the flag too. You could could add when you know. Also, we have no burgers, <laughs> or our staff has just walked out the door. <laughs> so I, I that's I thought that was you know from a, a fellow uh, vehicular listener. I thought that was a pretty compelling thing to to, to share. I've got a parallel one that sort of goes with that. I ordered um, food and had it delivered by DoorDash the other day. And when the DoorDash comes up to the door, he goes, ma'am, I would not drink that milkshake. <laughs> oh, I was like, Lord. really? I cannot wait really? <laughs> and he said, yeah. He goes, look, I looked at it and the whole top of the, you know, those those plastic bubble things they put over the top was just crushed. And the Uber or the uh, door dasher said to the guy at the drive thru, he goes, I can't deliver this like this. And he goes, Yeah, he goes, it's seen better days. He goes, I stepped on a bunch of them. So into the trash. It went. Pregnant, pregnant pause was brought to you by McDonald's. <laughs> It wasn't McDonald's. Oh, okay. Well, well, it's sponsored by McDonald's anyway. We know what's happened there, too. However, it was sponsored by Arby's. <laughs> hey, by the way, have you ever noticed Arby, roast beef, Arby's? Mm. Never noticed it. I couldn't see it past the crush top to my shake. Oh, my God. This there are a number of reasons, folks, not to eat fast food, but just the fact that it's being made by the people that work there is probably one of them. That's <laughs> probably enough. That's why I cook at home. Because if I'm gonna step on my food, at least it's a germ that I know. <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. I just can't. I, I want to say I can't believe it, but I just can. Believe it. I've got another fast food one, actually, come to think of it. Um, it was another passenger. He loved the concept of the show. He'd never heard it. And uh, he was like, oh, man, I just want just one pet peeve. I'm in the service industry. I just want to beat people up when I see him do it. I'm like, whoa, well, what is it? And he goes, when you give somebody a straw and to open it up, they start pounding it on the table. <laughs> and I was like, I'm like, what? And he goes, it makes me want to kill babies. <laughs> I was like, okay. He goes, can't somebody just pull the paper off the top of the straw? Is it that hard? This guy was like, he was mad. He was, he was like, finally had a place to vent this anger, this deep seated anger. And I was like, I said, I'll give you one more because haven't you noticed that recently that they've put perforations at the top of the straw, or I guess you know, at an end of the straw, as if it wasn't. As if people couldn't figure out how to peel the paper off the straw. They had to add perforations. And he goes, yeah, and even with the perforations, they still bang the straws on the table. <laughs> this guy, I love it. I got no idea what his name is. He just was like, oh, thank you. I dropped my head drop. He said, thank you. His girlfriend was like, just kind of looking at him with scan. Like, what's, what's <laughs> when I dropped him off, he was like, Thank you, man. That was the best Uber ever. I just needed to tell somebody. <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Anonymous Service Industry Man out there in Colombia, that one's for you. That's so funny. Uber therapy via hate. <laughs> Polly, how you doing today? You got anything on the napkin? You're looking awfully placid. I hope you can bring some hate to the table. Bobby. I have... This uh, comes really directly from, you brought up a McDonald's staying on theme. This product right here. Minute Made Tepe. Minute Made Tepe. Made so this is made. This is made for Vietnam. Right. And let me explain. Nook, Nook Gam is actually fresh orange juice squeezed by old ladies they'll cut it cut an orange squeeze it 
fresh squeezed Where orange juice all place? over the country for right. uh, less than 50 cents a glass. It's a hot place, in, especially in Ho Chi Minh. So Coca-Cola has decided right. to create a orange product. So they have the pulp of the orange with no actual orange juice at all. Nothing but high fructose corn syrup and, and orange pulp. pulps. Juice drink. What they do, guarantee you what they do. They make the juice, they send the juice to the United States, they keep the pulp, and they pawn it off on the locals. I don't know what's going on, but it seems like a direct attack on like a healthy, <laughs> a healthy culture to the point where they were actually Coca-Cola was providing the stands. So they were providing stands throughout Ho Chi Minh City to like competitive old ladies. Stands next to old ladies. Oh my God. Can no, you no, giving it? the giving the old ladies sodas to sell because fresh squeezed orange juice and fresh coconut juice isn't killing people. Jesus Christ. So do you know how in the in the like eighties, seventies and eighties, Coca Cola was putting uh, their machines into schools in the right. United States? They're they're doing that here now. So right. whatever, just same with uh, big tobacco. Whatever they could get away with in the U.S. twenty years ago, they've gone to other countries to do because they can't get away. They've they've already created childhood obesity. They've already created record diabetes, record cancer, that they now have to take their money-making scam to other countries. And I'm putting Tepi on the hate napkin. Absolutely. And fat smokers. Well, that was what I was implying. <laughs> of course. <laughs> hey, here's what the board meeting went like at Coca-Cola. Well, now that they've made, I love, we've got, if you're on YouTube, we've got some pussy action going on in the background of Carla. <laughs> Your pussy oh, is trying <laughs> Don't call Betsy that. I like her. Like I... Carla thought it fell out of her chair. She's like, oh my yeah. God. It's me now. It's first... <laughs> I did not look down first. I've seen pussy go behind the drapes before, but this is ridiculous. Well, she does match the drapes. <laughs> Actually, folks, that's a YouTube moment. Here's that hate napkin. All right. Um, here's what the board meeting went like over at Coca Cola. Well, we've got <clears throat> quarterly sales are down. Why are they down, Bob? Because we had to take all of the uh, soda machines out of the schools because it was making the kids obese and they die earlier. Well, we got to make up that revenue somehow. Everybody brainstorm quick. I know. Why don't we do the whole thing across the entire world with all the old ladies selling orange juice? <laughs> Mr. Minute Maid stands up. Yeah, yeah, I got an idea. We could just make the juice in some other country for pennies on the dollar. And then we sell them the juice over here. We put juice machines in the schools and we take the pulp and we put the pulp and we pound it off on the masses in the in the uh, indigenous countries. This is a great job. In fact, not only that, we don't even have to put in stands. The stands already exist. We'll just take the old ladies and we'll force them to sell Tepe. Round of applause at the table. Chairs go up. Oh my God. That's the world we live in. That is the world that we live in. <laughs> now, there's another product called Sting, and it's uh basically Red Bull. And uh and I'm I'm seeing parents give it to their kids, like that like their four year olds drinking a sting. Uh people are drinking sting. sting? Sting. 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 It's Red Bull. It's Red Bull. Yeah. Sting. Better than Am I the only person who thinks Red Bull is disgusting? No. No, it's, it's like Night Bull. <laughs> no. I can't imagine drinking something bad for you. <laughs> of course you wouldn't. All right. And, uh, we're getting close to the end here of episode 58, season uh, one, the special recovery episode. But I do have a question for the group. Sure. Um, I, hate to, I hate to throw these spontaneous questions at you, but um, <clears throat> what is the 
weirdest or grossest or just oddest thing you ever found in like a junk drawer or your desk drawer coming through it, cleaning it, and you're like, oh my God. So uh, you're in your, you're, you're like, it's time to clean out this drawer. I can't find any of the things in here anyways. And you take all the contents out and then you're just like, what? <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. Anybody got anything? Uh, yeah. Alrighty. I, I wasn't cleaning my desk. I had gone to work one morning. I was, uh, at the time, the registrar for a college and went to work. I, and it was a very old, like, Civil War era buildings on this campus and I opened up my desk drawer and there was a bat in my what? Desk. A live a, bat. A live bat. A live bat. And I very calmly closed my drawer, <laughs> got up, walked to the provost's office, which was just up three stairs. And said, excuse me, sir, do you think you could call maintenance services for me? And he said, yeah, why? And I said, could you come with me, please? He walked to my office. I opened my drawer. The little bat stared up at him. <laughs> and he said, he, he very gently, gingerly closed the drawer and said, I'll take care of this for you. It was not uncommon for us to come in in the morning. And when you walked into this building, there was this huge, like, three-story atrium. And you would see bats hanging off of the balcony. And we would have to call maintenance to come in and get a ladder and get them down. They would all climb down. They would come up through the, the vent on the gable of the building, crawl in, and then crawl down and get in the building. Or you'd be walking down the hallway and there'd be one hang, you know, we had those offices with the windows that were way up high. And there would be a bat hanging off of the ledge of one of those. And you would just walk by and call maintenance. But that was the first time I found one in my actual desk drawer. How it got in there, I can't imagine. I have got to imagine that that is the first time in recorded history, folks. You know, this is why we do the hate napkin that anybody anywhere ever opened their drawer and found a live bat <laughs> ever. I didn't On panic. I just, you know, I know I, I like the image of you opening the drawer, seeing the bat and then just slowly closing the drawer. <laughs> the one thing I did not want to do is go out of there screaming like a girl. And here I thought finding finding an old used condom in the drawer was was no. I, you you were topped me with the bat there. I can't I can't I can't do better than bat. Polly, have you ever opened up your drawers <laughs> and found something minuscule? Yes, I I found a a bat with a used condom. I called it a nocturnal emission. But what I want to tell you about oh, is, is, is called it a oh, nocturnal emission. Nocturnal I want what I want to tell you about is in my desk is this it's called teppy it's not there's not a single orange in there there's zero oranges it's a product that claims to be orange juice and it's zero orange juice there's no orange or juice there's nothing healthy this is a cancer causing product brought to you by coca-cola it is not a fucking orange people I think my dementia is kicking in because I could have sworn we did that one already. No, that's it was in my desk. It was in my desk, and that's why, yeah. Actually, it wouldn't surprise me if Coca-Cola sneaks into people's homes at night and places product placement, puts Tepe in, like, I, you know what? Hey, it's time for me to uh, call my best friend while I'm taking a shit. So I go over, open up the toilet lid, and there's a bottle of Tepe floating in the yeah. toilet. But honestly, they could make more money or selling bat. orange juice. Sell orange juice. Actually, Coca-Cola could could they could stand to listen to this because they could start hiring or training bats at night <laughs> to sneak into places with bot like little bottles of Tepe. 
<laughs> the only reason they don't is because they come in wearing these little used condoms on their heads. <laughs> it looks like one of those old pajama hats. Exactly. But we know better. Now I know where the pulp's coming from. <laughs> it's from my desk. From my desk drawer. <laughs> Oh my God, good folks! You've come to the end of another miserable fucking disaster uh, of a show. This was season one, episode fifty-eight, the special recovery episode. It's really nice to be able to do a show where I can actually see the screen. Um, I will say that much. And even better, tomorrow when he'll remember what we talked about. Yeah, well, that'll take a few more um, months of recovery. <laughs> Yeah, the vision, the vision and memory are the less to come back. Um, this was uh, a fantastic episode. Again, brought to you by uh, this book called Uber Nights. Uber Nights, which you get on Amazon. We're also sponsored by Anchor FM. Anchor FM. If you too want to make a fool of yourself on the internet, go to Anchor FM and they'll help you out. Um, again, send us your hate to info at thehatenapkin.com. And a special thanks to all of the listeners out there that contributed to this show. We had straws. Um, we need we need no ice cream flags at the McDonald's. Uh, Coca Cola Tepe, you can shove it up your ass. Coke, Coke or Coke is shit. There, how about that? Uh, what else did we hate today? Nobody else can remember. It wasn't worth. <laughs> and we've already forgotten it. We're not even at the end of the show. Add to your drawers. Use condoms. <laughs> I think that might be the title of this episode. I better make a note. Bats in your drawers and loose condoms. Used condom. <laughs> and other things Coke doesn't want you to know. All right, folks. Thank you again. Once again for traveling deep, deep, deep inside the angles of hey.